Hey guys, welcome to the month of September, my favorite month. It's my birthday month and also it is the month of spring. And in South Africa, it is Heritage Month. Now on the 24th of September, we celebrate a national holiday called Heritage Day. And it's basically a day where every South African is encouraged to celebrate their good tradition, their culture, their language, where they come from and so forth. And so I'm going to be dedicating a number of these blogs to the topics of heritage. And I want to start off with about talk, talking about what conversations we're having at home, what conversations we're having with our children about identity. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because for most of my life, in fact, for all of my life, I've had a major identity crisis. Being born into the Tswana um, tradition, being brought up in a white Jewish home. My mother was a domestic worker. I had the best of, 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 of everything in terms of, of the material, material side. Uh, there were sacrifices obviously made from both sides of the family, my biological and my foster family. And so as I meandered through, through my teens and into my 20s, and still in denial about, about the truth behind my, my reality, my, my identity crisis, uh, I finally, I could say, hit rock bottom when I was in my 30s and woke up one day and realized, wait a minute, Bruce, you don't know who you are. You don't know where you come from. You, you know your parents. I mean, I knew my parents. I've always known them. But I didn't really know them. I never had proper conversations with them. And so I packed up my car in my, in my mid-30s and moved to Pogeng, which is a village in the northwest province about 300 kilometers from Johannesburg, the main end of the city. And I embarked on a journey of trying to rediscover myself, um, understand my parents, understand my father, who for so many years I had resented, not realizing that I had resented him. And so why it's so important and why I got to this point, and I'm lucky that I got to the point. And let me tell you, the journey wasn't that easy, and I'm going to be honest, and as, it, as I've written in my book, you know, there were times in my journey that were infused with a lot of alcohol, that were infused with drugs, that were infused with sex, it was all sorts of things that you're trying to numb the pain and try to break away from the reality, but it always catches up with you. And so the importance of having those conversations with your children about the clan that you come from, the language that you speak. Now, I mean, growing up, I hated, I hated any black language. And anybody who tried to speak to me, I would, my, my automatic response was, I only speak English because I was that bright. And so now understanding the importance behind language and what it says about who we are and where we come from is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And so the conversations that should be had at home and with our friends and peers is, once again, where, where are we coming from? What our language means. Every word in every African traditional language has a meaning and it's linked to something else. And as much as I'm trying to learn as much Tswana as I can and speak, and, and it's taken me a long time to get over the ego because, yes, I sound like a white person when I speak, but it's now I'm just trying to understand the essence behind each word and what each word means and the, and, and the power that lies within that language. And, and that comes with, with, with having a strong standpoint of, of who you are. You know, one of the things that I, I, I grappled with at university was that uh, I went to Wits University and it was 1994, so there was a lot of political tension and freedom and it was a great time to be alive. But one of the things that I struggled with was that there was this, 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 this notion that went out and people were talking about black pride. In my mind, I was like, these people are mad. How could black pride be put into the same sentence? And that was purely because of the lack of knowledge and lack of, of, of culture and lack of identity and lack of pride that had been instilled in me from an earlier age. So I didn't understand that a black person could be proud. I didn't understand the fact that black people could stand up for themselves because I was always taught that white is, is right and white and black is inferior. And so those conversations that we, we need to have with each other, and that's why I keep on saying with each other because I'm not the only one who, who, who's going through this, is that how do, we, how do we see ourselves? 
Do we see ourselves still as inferior? Yes, we might have gone through the democracy and so forth. You know, um, what are the truths that we're telling ourselves? What are the truths that we're telling our children? We look into the media, they're telling pe people, people still believe that, why well, women still believe that you, you can only be beautiful once you've had Caucasian hair in your head. Well, I've done that away with that. And, and that was another way for me to reclaim and my, my power and strength as a black woman. And no, I'm not saying that you need to go shave your head in order to feel that, but you've got to go through those, those conversations and those arguments with yourself and with people that are in your space to understand where you're coming from and then therefore where you're going. And so in closing, you know, one of the most important things that we, we need to instill, as I said, is our language. And we need to instill that sense of pride. And that comes with knowing our clan, knowing where we come from. When we go home for a funeral, why do we do certain rituals? Why do we slaughter the cow? What is the meaning behind that? The things that we do and don't do at a gravesite or at the cemetery or before somebody is born or when somebody gets married. Why do we do those things? It wasn't just put there for a reason. Our ancestors implanted that for a particular reason. We need to reclaim those, that knowledge. We need to reclaim that power that lies within that. You know, yes, we're moving in in a fast moving in, into the social media space and, and everything is about technology and that's fantastic. But if, as while we do that, let's not lose sight of, of, of where we're coming from. And we need to lead this pathway as we move forward into that modern technology where everything is just going into cyberspace. We need to find a place where we can be grounded and thus teach our children how to ground themselves. So for more information on my journey, or I suppose how I've been reclaiming myself, um, my book is Reclaiming the Soil, and it can be purchased online, amazon.com or lulu.com, or just send me a message via my website, that is rosenwithenna.biz, and I'll send you all the details on where you can actually purchase it. Thanks so much for watching.